Good afternoon, boys and girls. It's Miss Harling. Today again is Wednesday, January 13th, 2021. I am going over tonight's homework. You have to do tonight pages 227 and 228. It is the associative property of multiplication. This is practice and homework lesson 4.6. So, those of you who are watching, it can be from Mrs. Graham's class or you might be from my class, Ms. Harling, and I am showing you some of the problems for tonight's homework. The rest you will do on your own. All right, starting at the top, here are the directions. Well, let me do this first. Our learning target for this week has been, I can use the associative property to find products. When we're looking for the product, we are looking for the final answer in a multiplication equation. So in using the associative property, we have been learning how to multiply three numbers together using parentheses. So that is what we're doing tonight for homework with the associative property of multiplication. Here is the example they gave you for number one. The directions say, write another way to group the factors, then find the product. We did this in class today, boys and girls. So it's the same thing you saw this afternoon or this morning if you were with me in Ms. Harling's class. We went over this. So here is three times two times five. The parentheses are around the three and the two. Now if we rewrite the problem, we can write three times two times five, but our parentheses are now around the two and the five. Now they gave you the answer, but I, they're missing a step that we talked about in class. We always multiply inside the parentheses first. So the two factors are two and five, that makes 10. And then we still have to multiply the three, which is outside of the parentheses. So three times 10 would give us 30 as our final answer. So I will do one of these with you, and then the rest you will do at home, you'll do by yourself, okay? So let's see. Let's do number three. All right, number three shows two times two times eight. So let me zoom in there a little bit, and let's go over that one together. The parentheses are around the two and the eight, but I'm going to rewrite the equation two times two times eight. And this time I will put my parentheses around the two and the two because the directions asked that we change or write another way to group the factors. So we grouped two times two together and then put the eight outside. So. Two times two gives me four. I bring down that answer. Now I have to finish multiplying. I bring down the multiplication sign, and I also bring down the number eight to finish. What is eight times four? If you said 32, you are correct. Again, if you need to use one of the strategies that we learned in multiplication to help you find the answer, please do that. Maybe on a scrap sheet of paper, you could show equal groups, you could skip count, you could use a number line, you can make an array, you could make a bar model. All of those strategies would help you if you need help solving the multiplication equation. All right, so now if we go down to number seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, you're really doing the same thing, boys and girls, but this time you have to put the parentheses where they belong. They did not give you any parentheses. And in order to multiply three numbers together, you must use parentheses first for the associative property. So let's go down and do number 10, okay? Number 10, if I zoom in here a little bit, will show you seven times two times three. Well, I'm gonna put the parentheses around the two and the three. And now I can multiply to find my final answer or the final product. First, I multiply what's inside the parentheses. 
two times three is six. I bring down the multiplication sign and I bring down the other factor, seven. Now I have to finish. Seven times six. Again, use a strategy if you don't know the answer. You could make seven rows of six, seven groups of six. You could skip count by seven, which is very difficult for some of you, I know. You can also use repeated addition or use a bar model or even a number line. So if you wanted to do this, I know most of you would probably show equal groups of six. You would show seven equal groups of six. But I'll tell you the answer now. Seven times six is 42. So that is your answer for number 10. So boys and girls, when you are doing number seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, you must first put in the parentheses and then finish multiplying to find the final answer. It says use parentheses. All right, now we're gonna go down to the word problems and I'm gonna do one of them with you. Let's see. Um, let's do number 13. All right, so I'll zoom in again. Let's take a look at that. It says Beth and Maria are going to the county fair. Admission costs $4 per person for each day. They plan to go for three days. How much will the girls pay for all three days? So now let's underline and circle important information. Beth and Maria are going to the county fair. Admission, the cost to get into the fair is $4. Underline and then circle four. And that's how much it costs per person. Keyword also is each. We know we're going to have to multiply. They plan to go for three days. Please circle and underline. And then the question, how much will the girls pay for three days? Just underline that whole thing. Because the question helps us to realize what we have to do in order to solve the problem. We have to find out how much money the girls are going to spend. So we're going to put those four numbers, excuse me, those three numbers down on the line. It's four dollars to get into the fair each day. They are going for three days and we need to know how much money they're going to spend within the three days. So now we're going to multiply. First, we must group two of the products together. We are going, or excuse me, two of the factors together. We're going to put parentheses around the three and the three. So those are the two factors we're gonna group together first. So we have to multiply them first. What is three times three? Nine. Now we have to multiply the four because we did not use it yet. So I brought down the four, I brought down the multiplication sign. Four times nine. is 36. So guess how much money they have to spend? $36. All right, you will do uh, number 14 on your own. And then of course, Ms. Harling is going to do number 15. I always do the writing part with you. So on number 15, it says write. Why would you use the associative property of multiplication to solve 10 times four times two? How would you regroup the factors? So please write, I would regroup four times two times 10. So instead of having the parentheses around the 10 and the four, I changed it to the four and the two, and I put 10 outside of the parentheses. So why would you use it? Because you're multiplying three numbers together. That's why you use the associative property, because it allows you to use parentheses. So we're gonna say, I would re, oops, I spelled regroup wrong, sorry. <clears throat> I would regroup four times 10, excuse me, four times two times 10. Please write the 
parentheses. That's the key word you have to know for the associative property. Helps me to multiply. Okay, so please write, and I'll try to zoom in a little bit, but I wanna make sure you can see the whole sentence. It says, why would you use the associative property of multiplication to solve 10 times four times two? How would you regroup? I showed you how to regroup. I would regroup four times two times 10. Four and two have parentheses around it. And then I said, the parentheses help me to multiply, excuse me, helps me to multiply. You need those parentheses because that's what you multiply first and then you continue to multiply outside of the parentheses. All right, I'll give you a few seconds to copy that and then I'm gonna flip it over to page 228 on the back of this sheet. All right, I'm just gonna keep it there for a little bit longer. Again, if I flip over the paper and you're not done, Please pause the video so you can finish writing. When you're ready, then you can hit play again. Okay, I'm going to the back. Okay, let's see, number one and two. Again, you're multiplying three numbers all together. I'm gonna to do number one. It says there are two benches in each car of a train ride. Two people ride on each bench. If a train has five cars, how many people can be on a train? A lot of information. Please underline and circle. How many benches are there? Two. Circle the number two, underline bench. Also underline each, it's in there a few times, but that means we need to multiply. Now notice what they did here. They wrote the number two, but I want you to circle it. And I'll zoom in a little bit if you can't see what I'm doing. They're trying to trick you to make sure that you are reading carefully. So this time they wrote out the number two, T-W-O, please circle. But we know two people ride on each bench. If a train has five cars, circle five, how many people can be on the train? So we're just gonna multiply those three numbers together using the associative property. Two benches on each train, two people ride on each bench, the train has five cars, so how many people can be on the train? I'm gonna put my parentheses around the two and the two because that's pretty easy. I know how to multiply two times two. Two times two is four. Bring down the multiplication sign. Bring down the five. Four times five is 20. So now we've answered the question. How many people can ride, or excuse me, how many people can be on a train? 20 people. Okay. Let's look at the rest of the questions here on the back. I'm not doing number two, I'm not doing number three. Let's do number four. Trevor made a picture graph to show how many minutes each student biked last week. This is the key. So let me zoom in again. And it says, one wheel equals 10 minutes. So you have to count by tens. So here's what the picture graph showed for Trevor as far as how long he biked. I see two whole circles and then I see a half, a, excuse me, two whole wheels and then I see a half a wheel. I gotta figure out what this half means. Well, if a whole wheel equals 10, what's half of 10? If you said five, you are correct. So this is 10, 20, and half of 10 is five. So 10 plus 10 plus five 
gives me 25. That is your answer. Trevor biked for 25 minutes. All right. Going down to number five, I'm not going to do. You have to round to the nearest 10. Be careful. 142. You're looking at the two to see what to do to the four. You're only rounding to the nearest 10. So this one is going to stay because they don't want you to round to the nearest 100. All right, number six, I'm not doing. Okay, boys and girls, I went a little bit past the 15-minute mark. I don't want these videos to be too long, so I did a lot of problems with you. The rest is for you to do on your own. I will see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Bye.